Uh, yes, visual is on, but I'm going to share my screen one moment. We're four seconds on. Let me share my screen and come off talking. Um. I turn my thoughts within, dear Lord, for here is. Did he pause? It's where you dwell in your kingdom, nestled in my heart, where everything is well. I turn my thoughts within, dear God, and find pure love and peace, harmony, the watchword here, apparent doubt and discord cease. For here is where I find the truth. There is one, the all in all, the truth that makes me free to be. I need its every call. I turn
Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living's Lifeline series. It's a wonderful, warm Thursday evening, and I open my heart and welcome each and every one of you this evening. We, we have this series which is designed to provide the spiritual tools and strategies to enable people to rise above and consciously respond to the challenges being faced during these times. We also want to support you in shifting from fear-based to faith-based thinking. Now, before we go any further, I'd like to invite our pastor, Reverend John Scott, to, to start us off with an opening affirmative prayer. Thank you, Sandy. Good evening, one and all. It's a joy for me to add my own words of welcome to this hour of connectivity, liberty, love and laughter, and to welcome you and our special guest, Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson. Let us begin as all things begin with God. Together, we recognize the one perfect and perfecting presence and power, God, the source and substance of our very being. We are one with this all intelligent creation this presence that is even now uniting everyone that is tuned into this spiritual experience we call lifeline. There are no degrees of separation. The connectivity, liberty, love, and laughter of God bind us together with cords of everlasting unity so that we are one. Our guest presenter, Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson, our moderator, Sandra Cooper, and I, as well as everyone viewing, are all channels through which the intelligence and power of the universe find perfect expression, and this broadcast is therefore a blessing to one and to all. I release this word to the law, rejoicing that the kingdom and the power and the glory of God are expressed in this evening's conversation on living abundance in these times. I give thanks that this is so, and together we say, and so it is. Thank you so much much Reverend John and now it is my absolute pleasure to introduce our guest speaker of course we're going to just jump right into it he is he has been frequently referred to as a renaissance man he's a lifelong learner with a passion for personal transformation transmutation and transfiguration there's a lot of transing <laughs> and he lives this as a teacher, minister, speak, mentor, father, and a whole lot more. His mission is to live, move, and be an active member of society who serves to educate, elucidate, and emancipate people and communities to awaken and empower themselves and recognize, realize, and materialize their full divine potential. He accomplishes all this through his service and the transformative teachings, technologies, and practices of new thought. A licensed Center for Spiritual Living minister, he currently serves as a senior minister at the Center for Spiritual Living in DC, uh, Greater Baltimore. Thought after and popular guest speaker and teacher, spiritual living and Unity Churches, and was our special guest here in Jamaica at our Thanksgiving celebrations in 2018. Our guest is a prolific writer and published author of Moving Mountains, The Journey of Transformation and Visual Music, Interpreting Songs and American Sign Language. 
Both are available on Amazon with much more in the pipeline. As a teacher and workshop facilitator, he brings to life workshops in diversity and inclusion, uh, meditation, American Sign Language, empowered living, spirituality, and mysticism. He has been a, a radio program host on Voice America and recently was the co-host of Big Universe with Unity Online Radio. This awesome spirit has been a professional sign language interpreter for over 30, 20 years and has served as a public school teacher and college professor at several colleges and universities. Friends, help me welcome the authentic, compassionate, transparent, inspired, vibrant, and empowered Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson. It is my absolute pleasure and honor to be with you all once again. I look forward to when I can be with you face to face once again, because uh, I think I got some jellies that are calling my name. <laughs> so uh, I guess we're ready to jump right in, right? Ooh. Okay, so we're talking about this whole idea of what it means to live abundantly even though what may be happening in our surroundings, our environment, our experiences may not be demonstrating abundance, prosperity, et cetera. So I want us to just think about this idea for a second. First, bring to our mind's eye what it is that we are talking about when we're talking about prosperity, abundance, affluence, whatever. So just like pause for a moment and when we talk about it, what are we talking about? Now, often one of the things would be money. We, we are lacking whatever number, dollar sign, et cetera. We're lacking money. Well, it may be health. We are not demonstrating an abundance of health and well-being. We are not prospering in our health and well-being. It might be relationships. We are tired of being by ourselves and having the entire bed to ourselves. And like, we want somebody to like cuddle up with. So we're, we're missing that. So we're lacking prosperity and abundance when it comes to relationships or jobs, or like there's a whole list of things. So anchor into that for a moment, because I have a question about that. If I say that I am missing, lacking, absent of, relationship am i saying that relationship no longer exists if i'm saying that i do not have money am i saying money no longer exists am i saying that health no longer exists because of an experience i am going through we would venture to say no if I don't have money in my bank account, I know that Sandy has money in her bank account. I know Reverend John has money in his bank account. So what's referencing my bank account is my experience, right? So that's one thing. If I'm experiencing a cold or allergies or whatever, does that mean everybody is experiencing cold and allergy? No. So it's important for us to recognize one, there is this experience that we're having, but this experience is based upon, like oftentimes we say in our philosophy, principle is not bound by precedent. Just because today I do not have X amount of dollars or I do not have a relationship or I do not have a job or I do not have a house, just because that's my experience today doesn't mean that experience cannot change in the next breath or in the next hour or the next day. However, if I want it to change, then my perception, my perspective of this experience must change first. Because for example, and correct me if I use any of these terms incorrectly, but there is this concept that you are very familiar with called the I and I. If I somewhere forget about 
the I and it's always the, well, you, you and you, you and what do they, what does the person have in their yard, in their house, because I'm focusing on what someone else has, then I can't be focused on the I and I. I'm focused on the they and they, or the someone and someone, the, the rich who get richer, or the the sick who gets sick, like I'm focusing on something external rather than focusing on what we know to be the divine source of who and what we are living itself as us. When we shift the perception and understand, okay, so what money, there's this thing called greater wealth, money, tangible wealth and, and affluence, opulence. That's what I want to experience, okay? One, do I know what that means? Because I've asked people oftentimes, like, okay, so you want more money. What does that mean? Well, you know, Reverend Ray, I just, I want more money. And so I pull a quarter out of my pocket and I give them a quarter and say, there, you have more money. Amen. And so it is. And they're like, no, see, you're being silly. I mean, a lot more money. Oh, here's a $5 bill. That's a lot more than a quarter. And they're, well, no, I mean, you don't know what you mean. Because if you knew what you mean, you would define it. You would state it. Our thoughts are prayers, and we are always praying. Therefore, every word we speak is a prayer as well. If you are speaking into creation this greater wealth, then you need to say what I am saying, what I am calling forth from the very ethers of creation is $100,000 per year into my bank account, tax-free, net income, like whatever it is, call it forth. But very often, we don't know what that means. Same with health and well-being. We, we just want to feel better. But why? Even with money, why? Why do you want it? Why do you want the relationship? Because if you want the relationship to complete you, like that, that Tom Cruise movie where the people, you complete me. We don't need someone else. I and I. I am already complete. I don't need someone else to complete me. We may desire extra companionship. You know, I sort of look silly dancing by myself. So I want someone to dance with. But if I am approaching it from a state of neediness, I need money. I need a relationship. I need, who, who, who am I attractive? How am I, what am I? Like someone looks at me and they see the aura of neediness. Who's gonna, who's gonna come towards me? They see the aura of, can you, can you, can you give me some money? Can you give me some, like, wh where does that come from then? Right? Cause I'm expecting my whatever love, joy, finances from some external source rather than anchoring into what it means to know that God is the source of all that is. There is only God. God is a circle whose circumference is nowhere, whose center is everywhere. Therefore, the very center of God is right here where I am. The very center of God is right where Reverend John is. The very center of God is right where Sandra is. The very center of God is where every individualized incarnation of God is. But if we don't recognize that, then we're not tuned in, tapped in, and ready to receive, ready to allow that to move through us. So it's like when people say they have writer's block. Well, the only reason you really have writer's block is because there's something else in the forefront of your mind. It's not possible for the flow of God to be blocked. Now, oftentimes we talk about, you know, the still small voice of God. The only reason God's voice is quiet is because we're letting the volume of something else be louder. If God is the essence of all that is, then for example, when I was there visiting you all personally in the flesh, and I stepped onto the campus, the very grounds where the center is located, I could not but feel and hear the grass call out and praise. I couldn't help but feel the energy from the labyrinth cry out and praise. The trees, I could feel the ground call out and say, welcome home, welcome to hallowed ground. And it wasn't a whisper. It wasn't quiet. It was a celestial choir calling forth. So God's voice is not still or quiet, except still meaning it is continuous. 
if I turn the volume of mass consciousness down, if I turn the volume of lack and scarcity down, then the sound of the voice of prosperity and health and love is so booming. It's like it, there's the old national Negro spiritual that is sung in the United States. Lift every voice and sing. Lift no, every they're... voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty, right? Let our rejoicing rise high as the glistening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling, as the rolling sea. sea, right? Yeah. When we turn this other volume down, lack, scarcity, illness, separation, we turn that volume down, then this booming voice of heaven within, we believe that heaven is within and we recognize and experience it to the degree that we become conscious of it. When we become conscious of the source of money, relationship, health and well-being, when we recognize that it's already right here where we are, then the question becomes, well, if I already have it and it's already me, then what is mine to do? And that's where we get stuck. We get so focused on gimme, 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 but what is it? I need to roll my sleeves up. I need to get out there and act accordingly to demonstrate. Just having a handful of seeds doesn't grow anything. I have to plant the seeds. I have to tend the soil. And then when the harvest is there, I reap the harvest. Mm -hmm. That's the conversation that we're having. So thank you very much. And I guess at this point, it's back to Sandra. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of stuff, a lot of <laughs> good stuff, a lot of heavy stuff. And I can just hear some of um, our listeners wanting to ask, oh, yes, that's fine. And I believe all that. Mm -hmm. but you don't know what has been going on. You don't know what's, what's been happening out there. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I lost my job. Mm -hmm. or I, um, you know, we've had, we're having a pandemic mm -hmm. or, or um, my, my, you know, in Jamaica, we talk about, you know, sometimes there's a little imbalance between the male and the female relationship mm -hmm. around money. Right, right. And, and, you know, he has another one that he's giving to, so we look at what's going on outside. Right. So I want you to speak a little bit to that because, you know, we talk about you talk about the I and I. We talk, you talk about us being already complete. You talk about it's all where we are. Right. But the, the, the thinking is saying, but speak a little to that. So yes, and thank you very much for that. Because the idea is there's an author by the name of Don Miguel Ruiz who wrote Four Agreements, Four Agreements. and such. And in somewhere in his writing, he references how we've been domesticated by culture and society and culture and society often makes us stay in our heads and we think a lot we focus on we ruminate on what's in our head if we want to change what's going on for example the example you gave you said i lost my job one my question would be how did you get that job in the first place losing one job does not prohibit you from accessing another right so the simple fact of so if you're so focused on what you do not have how do you begin to shift your focus to what is possible like it's easy for me for example right here and right now i do not have any blue mountain coffee in my hand i don't have a cup of it but if i focus now i can make some because sandra bought me some when last she was here in the united states i can go make some but i don't have it here with me now, if I focus on my empty cup, then I can woe is me about not having. Or when that packet is gone, I can focus on, I love, Sandra, I don't have any more. It's gone. You don't know what happened. Like I drank it, Tracy drank it. It's gone. But is it all gone? Meaning, is it no longer in existence? Can I not send an email? Can I not make a phone call? Can I not somehow get more of it? If I change my focus from not what I do not have, but shift it to what do I want to experience then? Can I move from lost job and ruminating on that to the next level up, the next vibration higher? What is it that I desire? I desire to have another job. I desire a more fulfilling job. 
Okay, that's a higher vibration. What's the next highest vibration? Well, how do I manifest this? Have I made any phone calls? Have I sent out any resumes? Have I emailed anybody? Have I gotten on any website? Like, what have I done? Newspapers. Have I asked friends? Do you know if anybody's hiring? If I'm focused on what's missing, then I'm not tapping in to the infinite flow because I'm focused on what's not here. So it's about how do I shift, raise the vibration higher and higher to say, okay, roll up my sleeves. What is mine to do? How do I now sow greater seeds to reap the harvest of what I want to experience? Mm -hmm. um, this would be a good opportunity to see if there, you know, if any of our listeners have any questions. Um, and, and while we, we do that, I, I just remember um, this morning in the Science of Mind reading, we have some really amazing articles by um, Reverend Dr. Arthur Chang from First Church in, in Los Angeles. And uh, I can't quite quote it, but he said something to the effect about um, the prayer work must have legs. And to the, yes. you know, meaning that we have to treat and move our feet. Yes. We have to do actions. We're not gonna, even when the, the manna fell from heaven, the children of Israel had to go outside and pick it up or it would go away in just in, in, you know, by, by the morning. Um, Steve is saying, I'm just here thinking. A restaurant is closed. Hang on, let me get this back. A restaurant is closed because it catered to tourists. The gentleman, the owner of the restaurant started cooking at home. One friend told another, now he has a client base. And, and I think that's an amazing, um, you know, um, way to sort of look at the next thing. Because this pandemic experience has opened up a whole lot of opportunity for a whole lot of people. Right. Yeah. And, and, but it was ultimately it's because people were willing to be open to it. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, if you're not open to it, for example, the example, well, I'm catering for tourists. There's no tourists. Oh man, what am I going to do? There's no, there's no tourists. There's nobody. And you focus on empty seats and empty tables and empty plates and dishes. You're not open to the new creative idea of, well, mm -hmm. wait a minute. If what I am is a chef, then I'm going to cook for Make whoever sure. I can cook for doesn't have to be cooking for tourists. I will cook for friends. I will cook for family. I will cook because it's what I am. And right. when you step into what you are, then greater doors of opportunity open. Like you said, you treat, you move your feet, and now you're picking up manna from heaven and putting it in the basket so you can take home and eat. I just want to make one comment, Sandy, if I may. Uh, it's, uh, uh, Reverend Dr. Raymond Pugh, you have, you have given us a mouthful already and a lot, a lot, a lot to think of. And one of the things that struck me in what you were saying is that business of um, the I and I, and I want more. I want more love. I want more, more happiness. I want, and the big one, of course, I want more money. And I love your, your example. You say, so here's 25 cents, you know, now you have more, you know. Exactly. And a lot of times I say to people when they say they want more, I say to them, what are you worth? Give me a figure. What are you worth? What Ooh. am I worth? Like, you mean you mean if, you mean by a salary? I said <laughs> yes. You know if you were if what are you worth? I've never thought about it. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. Um, I'm hearing Steve's voice. Is there a question the, the, for Stevie? No, the comment was from Shezibu, not from Steve. I just wanted to point that out. And Shezibu says okay. she's quite full, Reverend. Um, no questions, just loving every moment. And Arlene from San Francisco is saying the same thing. Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. you know, welcome, um, Shezibu, and welcome, Arlene from yeah. San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> so good to have you all with us. Um, you know, the, the, the challenge of, of, of not enough, as you say, it's one of socialization. So how do we shift that consciousness? How do we really get to that space of, of moving from- How do we begin to shift it? Yes, yes. yeah. So 
I think that ties perfectly into what Reverend John was alluding to with the question of asking someone, what are they worth? Now, typically that question is going to be, well, what are you worth financially? Like we think of Oprah or some millionaire somewhere and their net worth of seven point whatever trillion dollars. And so when we think about our net worth, well, um, one, like you said, Reverend John, most people have never thought about, well, what am I worth? And it's not about what's in your bank account. It's about who you feel yourself to be as an intrinsic divine being. Because if Absolutely. we recognize, right? If we understood, if everybody understood that the I and I, that God, spirit, the universe itself is showing up in, through, and yeah. as us, then we are worth every star in the heavens, every every grain of sand on every beach, we are and worth- every jelly on the coconut tree. Every single one and every one that will ever grow. Like we are worth it all. Because let's think about the relationship thing going back, is if I don't understand my own self-worth, then I'm going to bring someone into my life who sees my lack of self-worth and they're going to mirror it back at me. Absolutely. But if I know my self-worth, then I'm going to attract someone into my space who is just as valuable, just as worthy, and then we complement each other. It's like having one beautiful dancer and someone else who is just as good a dancer, if not better, and they raise the quality of the dance because they are equals, uh, right? So you, you know, you know uh, last Tuesday, I started a new class um, of our series, Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life at the, the prison here in Kingston. And it's very interesting when you, when you have something in your consciousness, how it, it gets reflected back from other people. So um, I was talking with the new class and at the end of the very first class, this, this participant said, you know, you have thrown me a lifeline. Mm. <laughs> and I thought, wow, that's the name of our series uh -huh. of online presentations over the next few months we've called Lifeline. He said, well, you've thrown me a lifeline because I've been sitting here waiting for trial. He's, a wait he's one of those awaiting trial. He said, and I have just been thinking, woe is me and poor me. And right. today you have shown that I don't have to sit around waiting for someone else to judge me. I've right. decided what and who I want to be. Okay, exactly. awesome. Exactly. You know, um, um, Theo uh, threw in a question there, Reverend Ray. Yep. Um, oh gosh, what if it's taking so long? <laughs> yes, I'm praying and I'm doing and da, 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 but, but it's taking too long. What do you say to that? Okay, so question number one would be by what determinant is too long, mm. right? Because for example, suppose I want to grow, I want my own coconuts. I want my own jellies and I want my own coconuts. <laughs> like I want my own. How long does it take for me to grow a coconut tree that is going to yield me coconuts from now until the day that I transition? Like how long does that take? But I want them now, like I want the coconuts now. So if I am getting impatient, then it means somehow I am quantifying or judging based upon this idea of not having. Mm. For example, I sometimes say, you know, if, if you want um, spinach or, or, or peppers, you know, you plant them and it'll take a, in three or four weeks, you will have a crop. But if you, if you want a big mango tree, a Bombay mango tree that, or as you say, jelly coconuts, it's going mm. to take a few years. Right. Um, and the law of growth, you know, steps right in. So the bigger the dreams are, the time is relative, isn't it? Yes, exactly. And, and I'm going to use this. So when I was there visiting you all, when we went from the hotel to the resort, we went via the, the expressway, right? But when we came back, Sandra and I can't remember who else was with you. That's Carol. Carol, the two of you took this yeah. up and we took the scenic route back, right? Yes. Now, we went through Fern Gully. Right, so, and that's a much longer drive. However, if I'm so focused on, well, can we get back? Can we hurry up and get back? Can we hurry up and get back? Then I'm not able to take in the scenery. 
when we pause and recognize how long it takes for a chunk of coal to turn into a diamond, and then for the gem cutter to then cut the diamond to really make it however many carats, mm -hmm. then we're stepping into, it's not about quote unquote time. It's about being in the flow, being in alignment. Because when we're in alignment, time is not, for spirit, time is not an issue. Mm -hmm. Time is an issue for us when we want it and we want it now. Mm -hmm. like it's the microwave generation. I don't have time to do the whole on the stove. I don't have time to do what Theo does. I don't have time to cook and put ingredients. I just want to, I want to eat now. So I'm going to put it in the microwave and eat it. But is it going to taste nearly as good as that fish tea he made for us when we were, no, it's not. So is it not better to sometimes step back and ask, why am, am I rushing God? Am I rushing spirit? Am I rushing myself? Am I not giving myself the time and the space to simply evolve and enjoy and see the lessons that I'm being afforded. Mm -hmm. So sometimes wow, something just came to me, pause. Reverend Dr. Raymond, and is this: when you're drinking that coconut from the from the coconut, just to be in the moment and to say, right now, I am sipping from God's evidence of abundant prosperity, because there are unlimited numbers of jellies. To quench your thirst, my friend. Exactly. There's no reason to glug, 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 and rush through it. Like you said, why not sip and enjoy each sip? And savor. And savor it, recognizing that there's an infinite number of these. Yes. It's the you same thing with jobs or relationships. or It's the same thing. There's an infinite number of grains of sand on the beach. Sp everything in spirit is infinite. Yes, Sandra. Um and Anne and also um, C wanted to come in. But before that, okay. um, it just struck, crossed my mind. I remember our founding minister, Reverend Dr. Elma Lumsden, in our classes and in, um, in our development, one of the things she said, there were, there were two concepts that I struggled with. One was um, in the here and now, in, in terms of manifestation. It can happen in the here and now. And the other one is in the right and perfect time. So I, I, I struggled with, you know, how can it be in the here and now, right here, right now, and, and still in the right and perfect time, you know, and, and, and then she gave the example of the master teacher, Jesus, when he pulled on the loaves and fishes and, and did the, the, um, his multiplication thing, mm -hmm. and that amazing five, five loaves and two fishes just right. mushroomed into enough to feed a multitude right. and she said dear in her wonderful voice you know he didn't have to go and plant the wheat watch it grow reap it mill the flour put it in the bread wait for it to rise and then bake it so according to the consciousness that we have right. that will determine whether it happens instantaneously right. i mean who tell who says you have to grow a coconut tree so someone can bring you a bottle of coconut water? Right. You know, instantly. So right. just to consider the consciousness that allows us to um, create, to, 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 to tap into the I and I right. um, for, for the fullest manifestation. Right. Amen. Yes. Okay. Let me go to Reverend Anne. She says the challenge is now to focus when there are many issues jockeying for first position. Now, um, do we deal with no job need somewhere to live? It? How do we deal? Okay. How do we deal with no job and needing somewhere to live, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera, when everything is jockeying for attention. Gotcha. Okay. So. I sort of look at this sort of like uh, when someone's driving. Very rarely, if someone's an experienced driver, such mm -hmm. as Sandra, you're driving and there's a lot of stuff going on. There's traffic coming, there's traffic going, there's trucks. There's this tiny little bridge in Fern Gully where everybody's got to take turns <laughs> to get across the bridge. And like, and while doing this, she's having conversation with Carol and me and Tracy and still driving and commenting about this tree and this rock carving on the side and like still and yet very mindful of the safety of driving. Mm. Why? Because she's a master at doing so. 
So there's the idea of things jockeying for our attention. If we practice how to be focused in the moment, which goes back to Sandy's other question, like what's a practice? So like things like meditation, contemplation, how do I quiet the busyness of my mind and simply bring it to right here and right now, right? So even here on this Zoom call, I see Sandra's image, I see Reverend John's image, I see my image, I see Steve's name, you know, I see, the like I see different things. And it's easy for me to like be distracted, but if I am focusing on what's here and who's here and why we're here, then it's easier for all the other things that might be jockeying for my attention to fade into the background. And I'm simply being present with the individuals here. Same thing with this. When things are happening in life, as they show up, when we quantify it and we say, okay, so how aware am I of my feelings right now? How aware am I of my thoughts right now? Because oftentimes, whatever's jockeying for it, it's like it's on automatic. But if we are used to being in control of our minds, recognizing that there is only one mind and that mind is God. So using the very mind of God in a skillful, masterful way is mine to do. And when I practice it through a variety of things, walking the labyrinth is one way. Because when you're on the labyrinth, nothing else outside the labyrinth should exist. You are here centering yourself. If you're reading a book, read the book. Don't try to jump to the next chapter. Focus on the words that are being spoken. When you're in conversation with a practitioner or the minister or a friend, be present. Don't already be thinking about what you're going to say or ask next or like be present. So all of these, like oftentimes people talk about spiritual practices. If we recognize that we are the divine, then everything we do is a spiritual, a spiritual practice, practice when we do it with the consciousness that Sandra mentioned. When we do laundry, then we are doing it from a higher consciousness and recognize that this cleaning of clothes represents the cleaning of my mind. It represents the cleaning of my, my body. It rep like it, it's a spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. And when we anchor into that, it's easier to sort and say, okay, right now I have no job. Right now I have no home. What am I going to, do I have friends that will let me sleep on their couch tonight so that tomorrow I can start anew, build the blueprint anew? In this moment, what are my resources that I do have access to? Friends, family, a church, a spiritual center, a spiritual community. Do I have someone who is there to support me in the midst of, whatever this situation is. And I would venture to say, when we really look at it, we find that we do. Absolutely. And so I'm hearing in that, that we do, we have resources that, that um, what, what our finite mind will see, our eyes tell us that this is a job, this is what my bank account says, this right. is my balance and so on. But there is a, the, the eye in the eye is infinite. Amen. And so there is so much more that we fall on. And even the, I come back to the experience of the pandemic. Um, you know, um, I heard a term, it's, it's not the, the new normal. It's the new now. It's the new now because there's just so much opportunity that's being generated in so many quarters. I mean, Reverend John and, and the team of us can talk about our um, being thrown into the deep end of technology. <laughs> I mean, this has been, uh, uh, you know, an amazing journey, and it would pr it probably may not have happened if COVID didn't happen. Right, right. Well, I see we have one of our members, Kathy Rattry Samuels, who is enjoying this from Louisiana, where a storm is happening. <laughs> a <laughs> physical storm, I imagine. Welcome, Kathy. Good to see you. Thank Glad you. that you could have joined us. Okay, Steve. Um, do we, what other questions might we have? The questions, the questions are very few. I think more minutes that we can. The questions are not very many. Everyone is just um, enjoying the moment and um, thanking Reverend Raymond, right? 
um, Ivan, Ivan Chang just joined us and say and said that because of this kind of reasoning, right? She's actually being present in the moment and actually practicing, you know, what we are here saying, what Reverend Raymond is here saying. So that is good. And Denise is with us too from Toronto. Amen. Welcome, Denise. Oh, welcome. Oh, good to good to see you. If not, I'm not physically seeing you, but good to know that you are still with us. Wonderful. Okay. Wow. Well, you know, this this is. Uh, really wish this conversation could go on forever and ever and ever. You know, question, um, Reverend Ray. Yep. Um, you know, it's been a long time that I've been in this teaching, and um, some of the rest of us too. And I know that my what I call my recovery time around what I call, you know, transgression or backsliding from yep. truth, getting all worried and getting my, you know, my, my stomach all knotted because of fear. Right. I want you to just speak a little to, to the role that fear plays, role fear and anxiety play in blocking the flow. Gotcha. Okay. So to be completely open, transparent for those who may not know this past Father's Day here in the States, Father's Day, my mother made her transition. And it's very easy to fall into the, the fear and anxiety that comes with, you know, the concept of funerals and death and all this stuff. And even with the pandemic, the number of people who have transitioned as a result of, you know, COVID-19, et cetera not having a job like there's fear everywhere around us if we surrender to that now keeping in mind that there are certain things there is a healthy level of fear mm -hmm. that makes us move if the house is on fire mm -hmm. right but fear about the imagined what if is not that's not healthy because I'm imagining, well, what if I lose my job? What if I end up homeless? What if my someone dies? What if, right? So is the fear, number one, with fear in terms of it blocking us is asking, is there a bear right in front of me right now to be afraid of? If there is no bear in front of me right now moving towards me, then where is the bear that I am afraid of? And if the bear is my imagination, then I need to do whatever my spiritual practice is. And if I don't know one or have one, then that's what a pastor and a practitioner are for to help guide us through this. But I have to ask, if there's a real bear, run. If it's an imagined bear, sit with it and ask, where did you come from and why are you here? You're still scaring me but I need to know why you're here. What are you showing me? What are you giving me? What part of me are you affording me the opportunity to transcend and transmute? Good point. There's one in my fridge. I'm asking it the same question. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. What are you here to teach me? Abstinence. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Because uh, well, we promised them some laughter. Yes, of course. Because when we're afraid of stuff, we don't, we don't, we don't embrace it. We don't go to the fridge to open it to find the thing we're afraid of. Like we're taught to run from it. So even when it's an imagined fear, we we defend and run and hide from it instead of inviting the boogeyman in to say, "I know you're not real. You're my imagination. But why are you here?" Mm -hmm. Because when we let it in and we run from it then we don't have time to be in spiritual practice because it's making us run from spiritual practice. It's making us run from being engaged with loved ones and friends. It's making us avoid our own self-worth. Mm -hmm. um, Reverend Anne's question also made me um, think a bit when she was saying, how do you focus on the positive when there is all this clamor around you? And I just thought, you know, if I, if I want to, to watch PBS, um, then I don't tune into another network, you know. And once I'm tuned into a network, I can't I can't view any of the others. 
Mm -hmm. So let us practice tuning into love and into, into the, the greatness and the power and the, the knownness exactly. of that love. Exactly. Exactly. Because we have options. If yeah. we have, and I always tell people it's just like everything in, in the tangible manifested world is a physical demonstration or representation of what exists in spirit. So if we have 4,000 cable networks and 4 billion internet websites, what <laughs> is that showing me about spirit? That there are options to where I can focus my attention, but that spirit is infinite. But in this infinitude, I can focus on that which is not life affirming, or I can focus on what is life affirming. Mm -hmm. Spirit, the law is always gonna say yes. So if I focus on news that reminds me how damned I am and that we're all going to hell in a handbasket and you know corruption and this and that, if I focus on war and rumors of war, then spirit says, yes. Mm -hmm. If I shift my focus and focus on music and orchestras and light and dance and possibility and how to serve the community and filling a need, then the law Spirit says, says yes. Mm -hmm, absolutely. You know, I, I, you said something, you know, Reverend Ray, and I, it really tickled me when you said, listen, the bear comes <laughs> and instead of running from the bear, you know, it's not a real bear because you know, if, if you ran from a real bear, bear that and you no know, would be trouble. Yeah, right. But to ask the question, why are you here? And it, it takes, a, um, this is the I and I in action again, that because to ask yourself, why do I feel this way? What is it that I, that I need to learn? That requires some, some quiet time to sit and contemplate. And as you said, if I can't do it myself, then that's why I have a pastor and I have yep. ministers and I have practitioners that can help. Yep. So I'm really grateful for that, you know, to really confront the fear and to have a conversation with it. Yes, you know? and absolutely. absolutely. Real quick, and, and just keep in mind that you also, we also have things like we have spiritual tools, we have textbooks, because one of the things that Ernest Holmes says in this book, How to Change Your Life, is he says on page 29, life is action. And you must be creative in some aspect. Life is action. Mm -hmm. Life is always expanding. How am I also demonstrating this expansion? How am I engaging in action? How am I acting? Am oh. I acting poor? Am I acting lonely? Or am I acting prosperous and acting as someone who knows their self-worth? Mm, got you. I must share with you some of the comments that we've been having yes. um, from Liz Terry, who says, great reminders about practicing the presence. And she says as well, love this. What lessons do I need to learn from this experience? This is a think in relation to the conversation with the bear. The bear and the fridge. What lesson do I need to learn? From <laughs> How often we forget this in the moment of distress. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, step Ekran says, thanks for the question, Sandy. And Shezibu, ah, here's, a, here's one that perhaps you can answer. Okay. What if I focus on the fact, that, well, I think, I think she's answered it in question. She says, what if I can focus on the fact that I am alive and can start again? I am alive and I can start again. That's possibility. Yep. Every breath is a new opportunity. Mm. And I always tell people, so once again, once again, everything in the physical is a representation of spirit, right? So how, Reverend John, uh, Sandy, have you ever, or how often have you ever saved a breath for a rainy day? Like you went <laughs> and put it in a bag or whatever and saved it for another day, right? Like we don't do that. Lots of times. Oh. All the time. <laughs> right? So we can't breathe tomorrow's breath. No. And we can't breathe yesterday's. We can only breathe now. Yeah. So the moment we anchor into what's present right now, it's exactly what uh, Shezibu said. It's, I'm alive. I can start again. 
But check this out, because that's this level of being alive. That which God is, that which spirit is, that which the I and I is, can never die. So that being alive is at every level of consciousness possible, which means the opportunity to start again is forever. Forever. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love and ever that. expanding. And ever, yeah. amen. You know, I, I am really moved by that because we have been socialized, as you say, by the idea of failure. Mm -hmm. I didn't do well. I fell down. Mm -hmm. I, this didn't work. I am not good enough. And we go on and on. We beat up on ourselves. And so it's the, you know, say here, we'll and come again. We'll and come again. I don't know who invented it, but it's just like, you know, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and start all, all, over, all again. over again. And to know that <laughs> until the breath goes from this physical body, yep. there is an opportunity to make it right. Yep. And there is help. And even after that. Yep. Oh, absolutely. I mean, because you know, that's quick... before, as practitioners and ministers. Exactly. If I may, real quick. So once again, being transparent, when I was younger, my mother was one of the main abusers who used to abuse me, right? Verbally, emotionally, she used to beat me, right? And over the years, we reconciled, she changed, she stopped being an alcoholic and we became friends. But now that she has left this side of the veil and moved into life after life, where love is infinite, eternal and ever expanding consciousness, I know that this, whatever she experienced on this side is completely different on the other side, where whatever the other side is, the next level of consciousness where life continues because spirit continues. She even has the next new possibility of being a different expression of the I and I, of spirit, of God, of the universe. Oh, it never awesome. ends. Awesome, awesome. Beautiful, I'm, beautiful, I'm beautiful. And just, just hold that thought tomorrow as you make your way Amen. on that journey. Amen. Yes, yes. yes. And, and, it, 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 and I think perhaps we can wrap up with this because the, what, what I'm hearing in what you've said is that there has been forgiveness on your part because you wouldn't have been able to establish a, a new way of engaging with each other if you didn't release some of the stuff that might have occurred 5, 10, 20, however many years ago. So um, one last question thing about the role of forgiveness in um, being open to prosperity. Can you? Yes. So I remind people that forgiveness is never about the other person. Forgiveness is you were bitten by a snake, right? If you were bitten by a snake, where is the venom? The venom is in you. You can be mad at the snake. You can set the snake on fire. You can chop it up. But the venom isn't in the snake. The venom is in you. So forgiveness is let the snake do what the snake does, be gone, whatever, but get the venom out. For as long as we are focused on the hurt and the harm that was done to versus the hurt and the harm that is already circulating through us, then we are blocking the flow of greater and greater good. Wow. I can't be prosperous, healthy, and happy if I'm focused on being angry, mad, and want revenge and bitterness. So I have to be an empty container for the infinite to flow my, fill my cup and the overflow so that I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup runneth over. Wow. So I have to be willing to oh. do that. We could do this all evening. <laughs> We're coming back to Jamaica. Yeah, oh, trust, Tracy and I have been having conversations about it, so you will be seeing us again. <laughs> um, awesome. you know, it has been a really, really fantabulous evening. Amen. I mean, honored. It took us you know, from the eye and eye. We talked about money and what it means, um, our sense of neediness, um, the consciousness that we need to have in order to um, attract um, money. 
the conditioning that we have had that we have to overcome the need to the 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 practices of meditation prayer using the support of uh, a spiritual practitioner to to guide us to support us in that mm -hmm. and just quieting the business the busyness that goes on in the mind um walking the labyrinth that, that we have we are blessed to have such a, a um our labyrinth there being mindful there's just so much it, this was so rich so rich and to talk to the beer i will never forget that one talk to the beer, talk to the beer. so wow uh and and so friends reverend dr raymond has this wonderful book I, i'll give you the title of that book again um what we can give you moving mountains the moving mountains yes Yes, and you can um, find that on Amazon.com. Also, please make, you know, if you want to talk to any of us, you can call into the temple at 876-946-2230 to make up an, an appointment to with a practitioner. And if you have been really touched, moved, and inspired by this experience this evening, we welcome your, your contribution. So we can we, you can contribute through the Bank of Nova Scotia. Our account number is 20941. There's also a link in the chat. Um, where you can contribute through our donate button on PayPal. So we, we would be happy and, um, and, and, and welcome your contributions in that regard. Wow, what an awesome experience. Um, Reverend um, Raymond, would you like to, to share your contact information? Oh yeah, that's fine. So people can find me, just look me up on Facebook or go to my website www.raymont that's with a T R A Y M O N T anderson.com or email me at same thing raymont anderson at raymont anderson.com that's probably the easiest oh forget that <laughs> that's awesome so I, I really would like to thank you um for this amazing experience reverend right. Jeffrey, we have to do this thing again you know um, yes, I think we do. And uh, you know, the, next, the next time he's driving along and he, he, he bucks up on a jelly, he needs to say, what are you here to teach me? So I have an assignment for you, Reverend Dr. Raymond, and it's I to make you. a cup of coffee tomorrow morning before you head out on that long drive and say to that cup of Blue Mountain coffee, what are you calling me to enjoy? <laughs> what is in the future? Oh, my goodness. And I look forward to, to welcoming you again and again and again to our hearts and to our beautiful Jamaica. Thank you so much for being here. And, 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 and in that consciousness, may I invite you, my um, our very, very special guest, to, to, to do our, um, our closing affirmative prayer. Oh, most definitely. So let us anchor simply into the breath, recognizing that this breath is God, is spirit, is the I and I, breathing itself as each and every one of us that the infinite is incarnating itself in this moment through, in and as each one of us. Therefore, everything that God is must be present in, through, and as everything that we are. Our thoughts must be God's thoughts because there is only one mind. Our words must be God's words because we are the word made flesh. That which we feel is what God is feeling and that which we do as we walk the walk and serve this thing called earth and humanity serving God in the way that we show up is how God serves itself. And so surrendering to this, I know and I bless this conversation that we had. I bless all of the people who joined in, the questions that were asked and the contemplations, the feelings of oneness and alignment, blessing everyone recognizing that right here and right now, this moment must be blessed because this prayer is God praying itself recognizing that this prayer, because there is no separate Raymond, this prayer must be the infinite speaking these words through itself, about itself, and back unto itself. So I speak these words of gratitude, of joy, of blessing, knowing that this thing called internet, this thing called Zoom and Facebook has brought us, no matter how many miles apart we were, to one another's faces, to one another's heart space, to one another's eyes and ears, we are present. We are here. We are together. We are a demonstration of that which God is. We are the I and I showing up for itself, through itself, 
and now back unto itself as I surrender these words into the law, the law that said yes before we connected on Zoom, the law that is saying yes right now, the law that will forever say yes unto itself. Knowing that these words exist already in the mind of God, I know that this, a world that works for all, is already in the mind of God. That right here and right now, prosperity, abundance, love, joy, and health is right here and right now. God showing itself through itself as itself. Surrendered because it's done. Surrendered because it's so. I simply marvel at the majesty of how God works. Knowing it is done, I surrender it with love, blessing Sandra and blessing Reverend John and blessing Theo and blessing Steve and blessing Vance and blessing everyone at the wonderful, beautiful Temple of Light. My family, blessing all, surrendering it's done. Together we declare knowing this by saying, and so it is. And so it wonderfully is. Oh, wow. Bless you, bless so it is. Have a safe drive tomorrow and we will be in touch. Love you, yes, bless yes, you. Yes. Love you all. Thank you all, Theo, Van, Steve, yes, and yes. for everyone joining us uh, this evening on Facebook. A very special blessing to you all. Thank you so much. Namaste. 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 What good. <laughs>